Hi, it's Dwyer, richarddwyer.com, keepingitfree.blogspot.com. I'm a civil attorney in Northern California, and from time to time, I like to look back on events that are shrouded in secrecy from the past that people have different opinions about. And one of those events was the death of Natalie Wood. Now, this week, and today is February the 8th, 2018, the current episode of 48 Hours focuses on Natalie Wood's death, right? And in that episode, they lean heavily on the theory that Robert Wagner killed his wife, that Robert Wagner is somehow responsible for Natalie Wood leaving their boat and ending up dead in the water, right? Now, let me just say this. I'm a huge fan of 48 Hours. I love the show. I love when they explore historical events. I like the level of research they do, right? They spoke with the captain of the boat. They have reviewed Christopher Walken's statements to police. They show part of an interview with the original investigating officer. They talk with policemen who are currently investigating the crime, right? They do an excellent job of rounding up people. They talk with Natalie Wood's sister, Lana Wood, who was not a big fan of Robert Wagner's, right? According to Lana Wood, when Natalie, who divorced Robert Wagner, was about to remarry him, right? When their engagement was announced for their remarriage, Lana Wood claimed she spoke with Natalie and said, Natalie, why are you doing this, in effect? And Natalie said, well, it's better to be with the devil you know. The inference is that Robert Wagner was a devil. Now, I don't know what happened that night on the boat, but the one thing that's clear to me is that this show is unfair to Robert Wagner. Right? The show is a bit too slickly produced, it's a bit too biased, it has two big problems, right? Two big moments that show that the show is a bit too opinionated in one direction. Let's talk about the two problems that are evident in 48 hours uh, version of events. You know, they mention, and it is big news, that someone on a nearby boat right, heard a woman crying for help that night. Think about it. Right? You have someone on a nearby boat who claims that Natalie Wood is yelling for help or someone who could have been Natalie Wood. Now, this sounds salacious. You hear it and you think, my goodness, the official version couldn't be true. The statements that Wagner gave to police couldn't be true, at least the initial statements. But then the show mentions, really in passing, that the police don't believe that this witness is correct. Right? That the police believes that the witness may not properly be remembering the events. Then the show continues moving. Well, that's an injustice to Robert Wagner. You have the captain of the ship on the show. Why not ask him if he heard anyone screaming for help that night? He's on the ship. Wouldn't he have heard it? 48 Hours reviewed Christopher Walken's statements to police. Why not tell the viewer whether Christopher Walken, who's on the boat, on the boat that night, 
heard anyone yelling, help, that night. Right? The point is, this issue, this information is just not framed properly. If you're going to be fair here, if you're really going to do proper investigative reporting and leave the reader with the proper impression of what happened, rather than drop scintillating news that a witness heard a woman cry for help and then say, ah, oh, police aren't sure about this witness, why not just ask the captain whether or not he heard anyone cry for help. Why not point out that none of the guys on the boat, right? There are three of them. Wagner, the captain, and Walken. None of them heard any cries for help. So here's where the intention of the show betrays the integrity of the show, right? You're left hearing about a discredited witness, a witness not even the police believe. And they don't then <laughs> ask the guy giving the presentation, the captain of the ship, the person who's strongly hinting that Robert Wagner uh, did something wrong that night. They don't even have him clear up whether or not he heard anyone cry for help. So you're left to piece together things, right? Clearly, if someone on the boat heard a woman crying for help, the police wouldn't discount the third party witness on the other boat. So understand, that night, no one on the ship heard Natalie Wood crying for help. No one. That fact needs to be emphasized. Not the fact that some witness on another boat heard someone cry for help. Right? That shouldn't be mentioned when there are two men other than Robert Wagner on the boat that night closer to the dinghy and Natalie Wood who did not hear any cries for help. Right? Let's get to the second overreach, in my opinion, by 48 hours. They point out that Wagner originally told police that he thought Natalie had taken the dinghy to the shore of nearby Catalina Island. Right? The boat is off Catalina Island. They thought Natalie went to shore in the dinghy. But then the show points out that in Wagner's more recent biography, Wagner has changed his thinking, and he now believes that the dinghy was bouncing up against the boat, creating a lot of noise. So Natalie, who everyone admits had a fear of water, may have walked over to the dinghy, which was attached to the boat, to try to tighten up the connection between the dinghy and the boat to get the dinghy to stop banging against the boat. In doing so, she may have loosened the dinghy, hit her head, fallen into the water or near the dinghy, and then been in distress and no one noticed it. Right? So 48 Hours goes to great pains to say, look, Wagner's story here is changing, isn't it? Before he thought she takes the dinghy to go to the shore. Now he's think, you know, saying that maybe she didn't even want to travel anywhere. Maybe she wanted to stay on the boat and all she wanted to do was tighten the dinghy. This is an inconsistency. Let me ask a more foundational question. Is it an inconsistency? You're on a boat, your wife disappears. The police then question you, you try to be helpful. That night you're operating on limited information. 
right? The cops say to you, hey, what were you thinking when your wife went missing? And your response is, well, you know, I thought she took the dinghy to the shore, right? I thought she left the boat. Well, later, after more information comes out, her body is found and, you know, you're rethinking that night. Right? Your speculation about what happened that night might change. Understand, it's two different questions. When the police question Wagner, they say, hey, what were you thinking that night when your wife disappeared? So Wagner was talking in the first person. He is telling police what was on his mind that night. He's telling police what he knows, right? He knows that that night he was thinking, gee, she must have taken the dinghy to the shore. Well, later, when he thinks back on the crime and he's speculating about what happened, right? Not what he knows, but what he thinks might have happened. In other words, he's not there in his version of events, right? He's not there when she's trying to tighten the dinghy. He's speculating. He makes it clear from the passage they read from his book that he is speculating. He speculates that, look, she may have tried to tighten the dinghy fallen in the water, hit her head. Right? Those two statements are not inconsistent. It's like someone saying to you, hey, what did you see? And then you later saying what you think may have happened. That's not an inconsistency. The show paints it like an inconsistency. They point out that Wagner did make an inconsistent statement concerning a broken bottle of either champagne or wine. Right? Wagner at first told police, look, that bottle must have broken in the normal course of sailing choppy water. Right? Then later, Wagner admits that he himself broke the bottle the night Natalie goes missing. Okay, fine. That's an inconsistency. But don't tie that in to Wagner's other statements that the night Natalie goes missing, he thought she took the dinghy. And now later he thinks what may have happened was that she may have tried to tighten the dinghy and then fallen into the water. Right? That's not, the latter is not an inconsistency. The bottle of wine smashing, that's an inconsistency. But not what Wagner thinks now may have happened. That's not inconsistent with him the night she goes missing, thinking that she took the dinghy to the shore. So to sum this up, the police don't have anything, in my opinion, remotely resembling proper cause to arrest Robert Wagner for the murder of his wife. Right? The show is really based on a lot of speculation. Let's also be clear, too, that district attorneys, they're political animals, aren't they? Right? Robert Wagner wasn't charged for decades. Now they're going to come back and say, hey, we have new information. What's that new information? The witness on the other boat that the cops don't believe? The show even goes further. They have some neighbor claiming that Natalie Wood showed up over their house one night. Right? Afraid to go back home. The inference is that Robert Wagner is a domestic abuser. 
But of course, there are no police records. Natalie Wood is not the only woman that Robert Wagner had a relationship with in his life. None of the other women have come forward with any tales of any domestic violence by Robert Wagner. Right? None of them. Let me also say, too, some of their other evidence, which they talk about on the show, new evidence, has Christopher Walken, Robert Wagner, and Natalie Wood drinking at a bar on Catalina Island. Right? Apparently a waitress now, uh, there, has come forward and has said that that day the couple, the married couple, Wagner and Wood, weren't really getting along that well. And that Natalie Wood was aggressive toward Robert Wagner, who was trying to defuse the situation. Right now, folks, while that shows that the couple were emotionally charged that day, right? I'm not sure how that kind of evidence is new evidence to justify, turn, um, you know, changing the cause of death from accident to undetermined. Let's just say I'm surprised based on the flimsiness. That's the word I'm going to use of the so-called new evidence that people are even thinking about calling Robert Wagner a person of interest. <laughs> you know, let me say this too. There's a witness who has come forward now, right? One wonders why this witness didn't come forward in the early 1980s when Natalie Wood's death was all over the news. And they're claiming, and of course the witness is unidentified on the show, they're claiming that they saw Robert Wagner and Natalie Wood on the deck of the ship. Right? That they were having a heated argument. And then the argument stopped. Right? Heated argument, then the argument just stops. Well, let's, let's think this through. You don't even hear a splash. Nobody's claiming that they heard a physical altercation. The show talks about how Natalie Wood, who, you know, is in the water and you can imagine a lot of things are hitting up against your body in the water and she might have been holding on to the dinghy, etc. That Natalie Wood had marks on her body. She had some injuries. Right? So they get a police officer on the show to say, hey, these injuries could be consistent with an assault. But yet, folks, there are no witnesses, no witnesses to any assault. The person on the other boat or wherever this new witness is who saw them both on the deck doesn't claim to have seen a scuffle between the two. Right? Apparently there are two voices and then there's one. The show doesn't even tell you whether this witness heard a splash. No one saw Robert Wagner push Natalie Wood into the dinghy or do anything to get Natalie Wood off the boat. There just simply isn't enough here. Right? So... Let me say, I look forward to more shows on Natalie Wood. But I also want more candor from the people putting on the show. Right? Rather than tell us that 
the police don't believe the witness who claims that they heard a woman crying help from the water, right? Rather than tell us that, why not just question the guy who's the centerpiece of your show, the show's captain, on whether or not he heard yells from the water? Let me say this. You know, the captain believes the same thing Robert Wagner believed that night. The captain claims that that night he believed that Natalie Wood took the dinghy and traveled to the shore. Now, we keep hearing about Natalie Wood being afraid of water, but understand, on the boat that night, Robert Wagner was not the only person who believed that Natalie Wood took the dinghy to the shore. The captain did as well. You know what the two men did after Natalie Wood went missing? They opened up a bottle of scotch, sat down, and drank it. Let me say this too. The show highlights a couple other facts. Right? The captain at one point says, hey, let's turn on a searchlight. Because the captain's a little bit worried that Natalie hasn't come back. Right? So the captain says, hey, let's turn on a searchlight. And Robert Wagner says, no, no, let's not do this. Is Wagner the first privacy-oriented celebrity who doesn't want people around him to know that he and his wife may have had a spat? That there's some concern that the wife may have left the boat? Right? Let's not paint every privacy concern here as an effort to cover up a crime. Let me say this too. If in fact Wagner had a verbal argument with Natalie Wood on the deck of the boat, why is this new news? Why, why didn't Chris walk in? who, according to reports, wasn't friends with Wagner, right? Wagner supposedly that night accuses him of trying to sleep with Natalie Wood, his wife, right? Why would Chris Walken never come forward to say, yes, both of them were on the deck together? Think about it. So there are three men on a boat we know over the years, the captain's story has changed. The show even admits that the captain <laughs> goes to the tabloids with new facts before he goes to the police, right? It's interesting, though, that Christopher Walken, who was Natalie's friend, who just made a movie with Natalie Wood, didn't tell police what police are now considering new evidence. Understand, Walken clearly didn't tell police that he heard cries of help from the water. Right? Neither the captain nor Walken did. Walken obviously never told police that he saw Robert Wagner and Natalie Wood together on the deck. Right? The big argument that they supposedly had that this new witness who waited decades to come forward claims to have seen from another boat or wherever they were. Obviously, Walken doesn't support that version of facts. Right? So, let's just say I love the fact that 48 Hours is revisiting what happened that night. I just don't think they did so in a manner that was fair to Robert Wagner. Let me say this too. Lana Wood wasn't on the boat that night. I understand that her brother-in-law might not have been her favorite person. Right? I get all of that. But let's face it.
when you're going to have her on the show and when she's going to say, I think Robert Wagner pushed my sister into the water, basically, right? I believe if you're going to have someone opine in that manner, to point the finger of guilt on an individual, you need more than speculation. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to reading your comments in the comment section to this video. In sum, I thought the 48 Hours recent piece on the Natalie Wood death was a hit job on Robert Wagner. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.